I want to use desktop content. My video player does not play back that file. I want to use video conferencing such as Skype or Google Hangouts for interviews. The video toolbox, the answer to these three common studio dilemmas. Let me show you how it works. The video toolbox grabber allows you to grab any desktop content and sends it out into an SDI key and fill signal. Before I show you how it works, Let's first start by popping out the SDI preview monitor. By double clicking on the Video Toolbox logo in the menu, I can pop out an SDI preview monitor so we can actually see what it is that we're outputting to SDI as well. Grab any PC content available on the system, whether it's YouTube, Skype, PowerPoint, you name it, Google Earth, Google Maps. Um, just grab it and you will have it available in an SDI key and fill signal. I've opened up a YouTube web, uh, web page in this case and I want to use this content in my broadcast. So what I can do is I can go into the Video Toolbox Grabber and uh, I can then create a region of interest uh, in order to use this into my broadcast. So what I'll do is I'll click on the Create Region button and now I can create my region of interest. I want the video player so I will then uh, select the portion of the screen that I want to use in my broadcast. I can freely select my region of interest but I can also use keyboard shortcuts to maintain aspect ratio and to move my selection around uh, if needs so. So if I'm not completely happy with my selection, um, I can also play around with it, move it a, a little bit until I'm completely happy with my selection. And then as soon as I activate um, my selection, it goes out to SDI. Uh, additionally, it also sends out uh, SDI audio and so the audio is embedded and if I go into the settings we have control of the volume um, but most importantly is the audio delay so with video toolbox with the video toolbox grabber you will have a means of grabbing any PC content you have available on the system including SDI audio synchronize the audio and you have a signal that is ready to go on your video mixer I can decide whether or not I want the mouse cursor to be visible in my output um, and also the image overlay um, is available from the video toolbox. So I'm using YouTube uh, so I can decide to use an image overlay on, uh, on my SDI signal. I can then select um, an image. Um, in this case I've opted for a YouTube logo. I can then resize, reposition this um, on, uh, on my signal. I can even play around with the opacity if needed and this gives you then the opportunity with Video Toolbox, with the Video Toolbox Grabber, um, again to grab any desktop PC content you have available on your system, including audio, synchronize the audio, add an image overlay if needed, and this all comes out as an SDI key and fill signal that is ready to go on your broadcast mixer. The Video Toolbox VLC plugin allows you to play back files directly to SDI. So for those odd codecs that might not be directly recognized by your video mixer, you can simply drag them into the VLC player and it gets sent out directly to SDI. It has a separate image overlay of course and the audio is included. So we have volume control but also that very important audio delay. Any VLC supported codec directly to SDI. The Video Toolbox Still Store allows me to bring images on air including creating playlists and keyframe animations to create the so-called Ken Burns effect. So I can start off with my image library. I can then browse the system uh, for folders and um, uh, images. I can then add the images to my playlist simply by dragging them over to the playlist. And I can then decide whether I want to bring them on air individually by double clicking on an image I can then bring it on air individually or I can select to play the playlist that I have created. You can set the playlist to, uh, to loop if that's, uh, if that's desired but um, let's stop this playlist and reset this playlist for now so I want to show you some of the functionalities that are available um, for each image as well. So one of the things um, that you can do is you can go into edit mode and you can then decide on the crossfade and showtime for each image. 
uh, sort of like slideshow functionalities. You can reposition and resize each image. Um, but let's reset this um, because each image in your playlist you can apply these things to. Um, but one of the key features that's been added is the keyframe animation. So what I can do with the keyframe animation is I can just say at the beginning of the animation I want to be zoomed in. And at the end of the animation I still want to zoom in. Um, but um, I also want to, for instance, move it, move this image slightly to the right. Um, so when I then uh, play this playlist, but let's first remove one image because we've got a double image in there. Um, if we play back this, uh, this playlist, you will see that we just created the so-called Ken Burns effect. The Video Toolbox Return Signal Management can be used for video conferencing. If you want to, for instance, set up a Skype call or Google Hangouts or any video conferencing um, application uh, for that matter, um, I can use, in this case, Skype to bring up the person that I want to have a call with. And as soon as they pick up, I will have um, a webcam or a video feed from that person. And in this case, that's myself. And I can use the Video Toolbox Grabber to create my region of interest and as soon as I activate this, this goes out into SDI and I can then synchronize the audio, add the image overlay and we've got a signal that is ready to go in my video mixer, ready for use in my broadcast. Additionally, a lot of people would also like to send a signal back to the person that they are in a call with. So not only bring that person into the broadcast, but also bring the broadcast back to that person. So with Video Toolbox, I can decide for audio and video what signal I wish to send back to what we call the far end, the person that you're in the conversation with. Video Toolbox doesn't only send out an SDI key and fill signal, but it's also able to accept an SDI signal. So we can decide what the person on the other end will see. So in this case, we're looking at my laptop and uh, I'm going to then decide from the Video Toolbox to switch to the SDI input and whatever is on that SDI input, in this case, the output of my video mixer, will get sent through the video conferencing tool, so in this case, uh, through Skype, back to the far end, and they will be able to see uh, it on their laptop. So you can decide what it is that you want the person that you're in a conversation with to see and hear. I can do this in two operational modes. For audio and video, I can set up return signal, and we've got a normal mode and an override mode. For each mode, I can decide which available audio source I want to use, and the same applies for the video sources. I can use the override function, uh, for instance, as an intercom to communicate instructions, um, or I can use the video section to um, um, show an image um, or interrupt the video signal if I don't want them to follow everything. I can then use this to select an image uh, that will be then uh, available. If I click on the override mode, um, the image will get sent through, and as soon as I let go, you will see that it will go back to the uh, SDI input. So the Video Toolbox Return Signal Management um, allows you to set up video conferencing calls, including return signals for audio and video to the person on the other end of the video call. Video Toolbox. Grab any content from your desktop. Integrated VLC player. Still store, including playlist and the so-called Ken Burns effect. Generic return signal. For more information, please contact sales at